Hey guys, what's going on? Jeff here from Films at Home, and in today's video, we're going to talk about Dolby Atmos. So being in the world of home theater, Blu-ray, 4K movies, I get a lot of questions about what is Dolby Atmos? This is a fairly new technology that I think a lot of people are still catching on to and still trying to fully understand. What is the difference between this and surround sound as you typically know it? Um, so we're gonna talk about that in today's video and kind of break down what Dolby Atmos is, what it does, and how you can take advantage of it in your home theater. Now, if you're interested in home theater, Blu-ray, 4K, movie collecting, any of that stuff, definitely subscribe to the channel. Huge shout out to everybody. We did hit the 20,000 subscriber goal before the end of 2019, so that was awesome. But you know I'm not stopping here. Next goal is 50,000, 100,000. We're going to keep going. So I appreciate if you would subscribe to the channel if you're interested in these types of topics. Now, with that being said, let's jump into Dolby Atmos. And a quick history behind Dolby Atmos first before we begin. Dolby Atmos was developed by, by Dolby uh, Technologies, obviously. Dolby Digital has been a standard audio track for a very long time. And then they kind of did the Dolby True HD, which actually wasn't picked up as much as the DTS HD Master Audio. And so Dolby needed something to kind of boost them back up again, and that was Dolby Atmos. And so in June of 2012, Dolby Atmos premiered in theaters, in movie theaters, with the release of Disney Pixar's Brave. So when Brave came out, they released that with the first Atmos mix. And at that time, only about 45 theaters actually had the capabilities to take advantage of Atmos. Now in 2019, as of the last survey they did, there's almost 4,500 theaters across the country that can take advantage of Dolby Atmos. And many of your local AMC or showcase cinemas or whatever your local theater chain is, probably have a Dolby Cinema, um, which is very similar to IMAX, where there is one theater dedicated to Dolby Atmos, uh, both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos Sound, and it's just Dolby Cinema all around, usually the best experience you can get. So Dolby Atmos started way back in 2012, and it took them two years before they got to home theaters. So in June of 2014, 2014 was when they really started pushing Atmos, and in June of 2014, the first Blu-ray came out with Dolby Atmos, it was actually Transformers Age of Extinction. And so with that, we had now Atmos in our homes and all the major uh, receivers, audio receivers, Denon, Marantz, Pioneer, Onkyo, all those guys, Sony, they all took advantage of the Dolby Atmos and started building receivers that could transfer the Dolby Atmos audio through to your home theater. Now it's pretty standard if you do buy a new audio receiver, you will most likely get Atmos if it's a 4K receiver, but we'll talk about that and the different components you need a little bit later on. So that's a little bit of history behind it. And so it's basically been out for about five and a half, almost six years. And what Dolby Atmos does is it takes a standard like 7.1 track, like a 7.1 audio track means that you have seven channels. You get two fronts, two surrounds, and then uh, maybe two backs, and then your center channel. Those are your seven. The point one is your subwoofer. And what Dolby Atmos does is they take a 7.1 point two. So that's your height, right? That's your height speaker. And that's the source. That's the main source is a 7.1.2. And in the Hollywood, in movie theaters, they can handle up to 128 audio tracks. And so not all of them have that, but they take the 7.1.2 and they can add 118 other tracks, which are all object-based. Now, object-based surround is the core of Dolby Atmos. And what that means is rather than only sending you know, effects that come off the left side to the left surround speaker, they can really pick and choose the director, the audio mixer, the sound engineer, they can pick and choose where that audio is going to come from. They have up to 118 tracks to play with. And so they can really map out a theater and say, we're gonna have this one come from, you know, five feet above the left surround, two feet to the right. They can, they can base all these different objects 
throughout a massive, massive mess of speakers. Now, if your theater doesn't have that many speakers, what they do is the theater will kind of cluster the objects together and then dynamically pan them across. So it may go from left to back um, and to one of the heights and kind of pan across your home theater because you don't have the speakers along the way, but it's still going to give you that effect. And so that's kind of the base of it. It's object-based surround. It basically, it gives you a 3D immersive sound experience where audio could really be coming at you from any direction and not just from the back, left, right, or front. You could be coming at you from all sorts of different angles. Now, with their home theater package, it's still gonna be a 7.1.2 base, but they can only go up to 24 point one point ten so they can only do 34 channels here um, and that only leaves space for 27 object based surrounds for home theater codex and so what that means is that technically for dolby atmos you could have 24 speakers in your home theater that just handle surrounds fronts left center back and then the point one is your subwoofer point ten is your height speakers. So you could have 24 surround speakers and 10 height speakers in your theater. Now, that's not realistic. Most people do not have that. For example, I started with a 5.1 system. I had five speakers, I have a subwoofer, that's 5.1. What I did was I added two height speakers to get my Dolby Atmos. That allows me to put two speakers in the front of my theater that will shoot down height effects and then the Atmos track will spread the rest of them around my home theater. Now, if I had a larger room, it would make sense to go to a 7.1.2 and add a couple back speakers. It may even make sense to add a couple more heights. A lot of people have a 7.1.4 where you have seven speakers plus four heights. So you have some maybe heights in the back, heights in the front, or some heights on the side. And all that does is just gives you that 3D immersive experience. You have sound coming from the top of your home theater, from the sides, from the front, from the back. There is no place in your home theater where you're not getting audio. But really what it comes down to is having the right equipment. And so Dolby Atmos, like I said, I started with a 5.1. My system is all SVS sound speakers. And SVS Sound actually has what I believe to be one of the best home theater speakers for Dolby Atmos. And I added two of those to my home theater. They are called the Prime Elevation Speakers. And what they do, a lot of speakers for Atmos systems, and if you have an Atmos sound bar, which is kind of an oxymoron because it's not doing the best job, but it tries. But what they're gonna do is instead of putting speakers into your ceiling or, or you know very high up on your walls, they're gonna put the speakers on top of your existing speakers and bounce the audio. So the audio is gonna go straight up, bounce off the ceiling, and then come down onto you as if it was shooting from above. Now those are kind of weak, and what SVS did was they created these down-firing speakers. You can mount them up on your wall, they aim down towards you, and you don't even need to put them in the ceiling. So your ideal situation, yeah, put them in the ceiling, like recessed lighting, put a bunch of speakers in the ceiling. That's what your movie theater is gonna do at your local AMC. But when you're in a home theater, that's hard to do, especially if you don't wanna mess with the ceiling. And so these can go right on your wall and down fire, so you're not getting any ceiling bounce, which is a little bit weaker. You're getting a really nice Atmos experience. These also work as surround speakers, back speakers. You can use them in all sorts of ways, but they're great for Atmos as height speakers. And so that's what I've used. And that's one thing you're gonna to wanna to look for. You're going to need to get a different type of speaker for Atmos. You're going to need these height speakers or something that does do a ceiling bounce or in ceiling speakers. And then you need to tell those speakers how to display the audio and that's what your receiver is going to do. So when you buy a new audio receiver, really if you don't have an audio receiver, I don't think you're getting the most out of Atmos. Like a sound bar, it's just not gonna cut it. You're gonna get a kind of, uh, you know, really simplified version of Atmos. You need a receiver to pass that audio through. And so you wanna make sure when you get a receiver, there are 4K receivers out there that cannot handle Dolby Atmos. Maybe they can handle DTS HD, they probably handle Master Audio, Dolby True HD, all that good stuff, but they don't have Atmos. You're gonna to wanna to make sure it has Atmos and it has enough connections that you can connect all these heights. If you were gonna go really crazy and go more than say like a 7.1.4, you're probably gonna need some really high-end components, 
The most I've ever seen a receiver go is like an 11.1.4, and that's a crazy amount of money. I know there are others out there, but your typical consumer home theater um, standard receivers are going to be 5.1.2, 5.1.4, or 7.1.4, and if you get really crazy, you can go up to 11. But like I said, I have a 5.1.2. It works really well. I get great audio, and I've had no issues with my Dolby Atmos. The other thing that Dolby does is that they have Atmos for headphones, which again is kind of a fake Dolby Atmos. You're obviously not getting a full effect, but with the headphones, headphones are actually surprisingly good at kind of moving audio around. You know that even if you have just two standard earbuds and you take one earbud out, you lose a ton of audio because, you know, even just stereo is using left and right. And so with the Dolby Atmos headphones, they do do a pretty good job of kind of bouncing around. Dolby does have Dolby headphone technology for Atmos. But again, I would recommend at least going with a 5.1.2. I would like to expand to get two more height speakers once I get into a bigger room. That'll be a 5.1.4. And then maybe add some back speakers as well, depending on the size of the room. It really all depends on your needs. But that's what Dolby Atmos does, is it expands to your needs. If you were a billionaire and you had a massive home theater, you could put 34 speakers in there and get a really true Atmos experience. It's still going to pan across the different speakers because the sound engineers are mixing for up to 118 channels, as I mentioned, really 128 different audio tracks. But you can go crazy, and that's the cool thing about Atmos is that there's plenty of room for expansion as the technology gets a little cheaper, as it gets a little easier to implement, maybe wireless gets a little bit better and so it's easier to place 24 speakers around your room, maybe ceiling speakers become easier to install. There's all sorts of things that they could do and they can really expand. And that's what's exciting about Dolby Atmos is that that whole 3D immersive sound, it's only getting better. And as the technology gets better and the equipment gets cheaper, there's gonna be more and more cool stuff we can do with Dolby Atmos Audio. So that's it for this video. Hopefully that was a helpful breakdown on Dolby Atmos and sort of what you need to get started. This is a very high level overview, but I think it should answer a lot of people's questions about what exactly is this technology doing? How is it different than just your regular surround sound? And what do I need to get started? So let me know in the comments if you guys are currently using Dolby Atmos systems. I'd be interested to hear um, how you've got them set up, maybe what your equipment is. And if anyone's tried any other speakers, I really like the SVS Prime Elevation. I'll probably get two more of those to expand to four heights. But if you have any other recommendations, I'd definitely be curious to hear about it. Obviously my receiver, I'll leave a link to that down in the description. It's the Denon, that uh, AVR 2600XH. I reviewed it in a previous video a few months ago when I got it. It is Dolby Atmos capable. And so if you were looking for something, that's a good receiver to start with. I've had very good luck with it. I'll also leave links to all the SVS Prime stuff, those Prime Elevation speakers, as well as a couple links to more information on Dolby Atmos if you're curious about setting it up in your home theater. But nowadays, most Blu-ray, other than Disney and most 4K are coming with Dolby Atmos tracks, especially higher end stuff. You know, the Avengers End Games, the, the DC movies, you know, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, like these, I actually don't know if that has Atmos, I'm getting it in soon. But most of these higher end movies have Atmos, and so it's definitely something you're gonna wanna look into expanding to if you want a really uh, top of the line home theater experience. And it's getting cheaper by the day, which is really great. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Definitely remember to subscribe, follow me on Instagram, check out all those links in the descriptions and let me know about your Atmos system. This was a lot of information, so hopefully it was good for you guys. I will be back soon with more content. I have Once Upon a Time in Hollywood 4K coming. That's gonna be a really exciting review as well as some cool stuff in the headphone audio space, which I haven't done before, but I'm gonna try. So stay tuned for those and I'll be back soon with more videos.